Uh, good morning, everybody. This is my first time going live, which is probably hard for some of you to believe since I uh, tend to not be a person of few words. Um, I have no big earth shattering news, but I wanted to share a story that I shared last night with my uh, class in religion that um, it had moved me as I was sharing it and some of the feedback that I got from the students. And so um, I wanted to pass that along to you in hopes that maybe somebody could hear it and it would bring them some some peace. So when I was little, there was a, a lot of things going on in my life, uh, just chaos, different things, right? We all have our, our stories about our pasts and the struggles and the challenges that we face. And so uh, I can't tell you even what age I was, but um, definitely young um, that I don't remember a lot of the details, but I do remember that what I used to do a lot was go into my closet or go under my bed and I would pray and talk to God. Um, not that I couldn't talk to him anywhere else and didn't think that I could, but that was just a, a way for me to kind of feel secluded and, and really alone with him. And at, at some particular point in time, and again, I'm not sure of the age, I remember thinking that, you know, I had these things that were going on in my life. There was this turmoil and these challenges and these things that I really wasn't clear about what their meaning was. And, um, I loved God with all my heart, and I, I you know, believed He loved me, and so it, it kind of occurred to me that instead of just talking to Him, I could actually maybe, you know, ask Him. Maybe He could He could lift some of these things or change some of these things, and it seemed really clear to me that that would be the case. So um, I had decided that I would kind of start out with what I, in my mind, was a little test, and I know that sounds hysterical, but I was testing God, right? That's clearly not the way that it's supposed to work, um, and I had always wanted a pet chimpanzee. So uh, I went outside my house. I can remember uh, the wind was blowing because I remember the wind in the trees. I can even uh, just about remember the smell. I can remember where I was standing in the road and, um, you know, looked up to God and said, I, you know, I want a, a chimpanzee and then waited and I and, and was really thinking, OK, it's going to take a couple minutes here or something maybe. But eventually a chimpanzee will come down out of the trees and perhaps this will be, uh, you know, a chimpanzee who has been orphaned. I really hadn't had the details worked out in my head, but. At any rate, I was going to get a pet chimpanzee, and it was going to really affirm for me that, um, you know, God was listening to me, and, and it was, this was great. Well, so for whatever amount of time passed, and of course now in adulthood, I look back and think it probably was not as long as it seemed to me at that age, um, the chimpanzee didn't come. And it was, it was earth-shattering for me, um, not because having a chimpanzee was going to be the best thing ever in my life, but because... This had been, you know, my way of saying, like, okay, this is going to be it. I, I go outside, I ask God for a chimpanzee. He delivers it to me. This will be great. And now I was faced with this reality that I didn't have a chimpanzee, but even bigger, what was I losing? Um, was there a God who was listening to me? And if there was, why would he not give me what I was asking for? Um, so I was just very alone in that moment, Um feeling like I had lost everything that was kind of my foundation and what was getting me through everything and was, uh, you know, as, as a child, not really able to kind of grasp or comprehend or, or put together what all this meant. And yet as I was walking back to the house now feeling really dejected and down and lost, um, it occurred to me almost as if a voice, right, but it was not this this burning bush. It was inside of me that said, what would you have done with a pet chimpanzee? And uh, realization that I had no place to keep one, I had no idea how to take care of one, and that really it was a silly thing to ask God uh, to go ahead and give me a, a chimpanzee. And then felt peace. Like, well, obviously that was not even me. That didn't even make sense. That wouldn't have been good for me. That wouldn't have been good for this poor chimpanzee. It was a turning point, and it's, I'd like to say that at that young age, that was it. Then I never questioned again and figured out that that was the way it worked. But as we all know, it doesn't. Right? I have asked for many uh, symbolic chimpanzees throughout my life and felt disheartened when they did not come down out of the trees. But God's plan is bigger and greater. And, you know, in that moment, it took me walking back to my house and realizing that like, I really had no ability to care for a chimpanzee. Sometimes it takes us longer in life to realize that the things we're asking for um, not only are things that we're not ready for, not things that we could handle, but are not part of something bigger than we can ever imagine. Uh, and as I was sharing with this with the students, you know, they were asking me a lot of questions about some things in life that just seemed like they would be an obvious, though. Why would why would this happen or that not happen? And um, 
it's never an easy answer because just like a, a small child trying to comprehend why they can't just ask God and get whatever they want, we put things in these, this human perspective. We forget that our understanding is not his understanding. And so many times in my life, I have gone through these dark times that were uh, reflective of me standing on the road there feeling alone, looking for a chimpanzee, of course, uh, darker because of some of the stuff that happened, but really that same feeling of being lost um, and continuing to go through the motions of faith, feeling it far away, and then get on the other side of it and am, am amazed by how much my faith has grown when you know, during that dark period, it felt like it was gone forever. So I would like to just offer you reassurance today. And, um, you know, what's going to come to bring you peace in your life isn't always necessarily going to be just something that's a matter of time. Sometimes we never get what we think we want. We get other things. And if we can approach life with gratitude, even when we are going through the suffering, we can start to find the ways that it's strengthening us, the ways that it's bringing us closer to other people, uh, sometimes it's something small, sometimes it's big. Sometimes God is is actually really shouting right in our face, but we're just so wrapped up in the emotion of humanness that we can't quite get ourselves around um, that it's bigger than us, that it's not something that we're going to make sense of. And, you know, throughout the past year, we, we've heard a lot of people talk about 2016. It was a really rough year. And I, I think 2016 was like any other year. We're going to have tough things that we're going to have to go through. And I would never try to say that what I go through is easier or harder than anybody else. I think we all have those things that we want and look for and are pretty sure would make the most sense in our lives and then just have to accept that we can't have them. So I would encourage you to give yourself that right to feel that grief like I did as a small child. I think that it's okay to feel sad that we're not getting a pet chimpanzee, even when we know that we couldn't take care of it. It's okay when somebody who's close to us is ill to wish that they were healed, to be sad and not understand that, but to still be able to feel joy and gratitude for the good things that are, are in our life because they are around us and it can be the friend that reaches out to you. It can be the way you suddenly see the sunlight because it's been raining for day after day after day. Those are the things that you can do that are inside of you. And I don't have the magic words and I wasn't given some specific gift that makes me able to have this realization. We just all have these special gifts and if we can share with each other, which is one of the beauties of social media, we know there can be some downsides, but we have the ability to share with one another, to reach out to one another, whether it's through messaging, whether it's through a live video. Uh, that we do that in ways that can be encouraging. And it can be even to say, hey, I'm really sad. Who out there can help me feel better? Or it can be to say, hey, you know, I just thought of something that's really positive and maybe this will offer hope and light. So that's my wish to you. Um, because of a lot that's gone on in my life in the past few weeks, more of that that I will share, I have felt, um, I felt, uh, sorry, amazingly, Amazingly grateful for the people in my life who have been there, the people in my life who I know will be there, the people who have cried with me, who have cheered with me, who have um, just acted silly with me when we, I needed to act silly. And I want to extend that appreciation um, because I asked God for a chimpanzee and he gave me a beautiful life. Um, God bless to you all. I hope you have a wonderful, albeit rainy day. The sun is up there, I assure you. And whatever's on your heart, whether it be happy or, or hard, uh, may you just really know that there are so many things to be grateful for. You owe yourself the right to be sad. And um, I love you for being you. Have a great day. Bye.